Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Pink Fresh Studio. In today's video, we are going to combine ink blending and layering stencils plus water to create this really cool faux watercolor look. This is a really easy technique and it's a great way to stretch those layering stencils. We're going to start out by stamping our image. I'm using the Cosmos Bunch stamp set here. This is new that just came out in our December release. And I'm going to stamp this onto some Bristol Smooth paper. This is the pack I'm using. It's from Strathmore. You can see it says Bristol Smooth Surface. You can use vellum if you've got the vellum surface. You can also use watercolor paper if you have that instead for today's technique. I'm starting by stamping this image on to my paper. I am going to heat emboss this so I did apply some anti-static powder. Now I'm inking up my stamp in Versamark ink and embossing ink. Now that I've stamped the image I'm just going to pour on some gold embossing powder over this image. This panel is a little bit bigger than well it's it's about five by five and a half by six so it's a bit bigger than your typical A2 panel. You can just stamp this on an A2 panel too if you prefer. I let myself have a little bit more workspace for so I can kind of be more selective when I crop my panel down. So here are the Cosmos Bunch layering stencils. They are clearly marked. They have these little guide corners as well as their labeled stencil one, two, three, four, and five. There's five stencils in this set. I'm starting with lay, uh, stencil one. I just positioned this over my stamped image and now I'm going to simply ink blend some of these flowers. Now I am going to ink blend these flowers in two different colors starting off first with marigold for two flowers and then for the other two flowers I'm going to ink blend them in bubble gum. I just didn't want them to be all the same color. I wanted a little bit of variety here. So after I ink blend this base uh, color for these flowers I'm going to remove stencil one and I'm actually already ready for stencil two. Now stencil two actually colors the base for the smaller flowers in this image and for these I'm going to do purple starting first with soft lilac a really pretty light purple and after I ink blend all these flowers in that soft lilac, I'm actually going to grab a second color, lavender here, and just ink blend a little bit at the top of these cluster of flowers with that darker color. It just adds a little bit more variation and makes it a little bit more interesting. Now we're on to stencil three. Going to line it up and use a couple pieces of micro pour tape. Any low tack tape will work for that to hold that stencil down in place. For this layer, this is the detail layer for the flowers. I'm going to start with Raspberry Bliss for those two center flowers and the two outer flowers that I ink blended with Marigold. I'm going to move on to uh, Clementine for the detail layer for those. So kind of like tone on tone here. And then we even have a detail layer or actually it's rather the centers of these little flowers. I'm going back to that lavender, that darker purple for the center of those little purple flowers. I'll, after I ink blend that, I'm actually done with that third stencil. I'll go ahead and remove it and we're now ready for stencil four. This is the base for the leaves. Gonna line this up here. Again, use some micro pour tape to hold my stencil and paper in place while I ink blend. I'm gonna start with Tidal Pond for the leaves. This is a really pretty, green blue color. If I were to do this over again I probably would have gone with a stronger green instead of kind of a green blue combo but it is a really pretty color. After I finish with Tidal Pond I'm going to move on to Stargazer. Again I'm just going to ink blend a little bit at the top of the leaves with this to add a little bit more variation kind of like I did with the purple flowers. Now we're moving on to stencil five, which is the detail layer for the leaves. And for these, I'm just gonna go completely with the stargazer, this really dark, dark blue. And the reason why I wish I had done a greener green instead of tidal, pool, tidal pond is because the tidal pond and the stargazer are really kind of on the blue side of the spectrum. And so when I do spray this and make this have that watercolor look, it just is heavy on the blue. I wish I had a, I wish I incorporated a little bit more green, but it's okay. It's still really pretty. Okay. So for the watercolor part, you need water. A brush is helpful. I don't, I don't actually use a brush for this part and an air blower. Now an air blower or an air blaster is a tool that's used in photography for cleaning lenses, but it has been used for card making for a particular for, uh, alcohol inks. Um, so you might have one already. If you don't have one, you can use a 
a straw instead. So I just spritzed all of the flowers with my uh, spray bottle. So I just put some water on there and that water activates that ink. And you can see right away that ink is moving and flowing over the page. And then I just use my air blower. And if you don't have one, again, you can use a straw to just kind of direct those drips of water down a little bit, just to kind of make it have a cooler kind of look a little bit more of, uh, so I can kind of direct the eye a little bit better. So after I moved that around the way I wanted, I let it dry completely. So this part's really simple and you can see what a fun, splashy background we have. But the only problem is it's a little bit hard to kind of separate the flowers from the background. So here I'm going an extra step, definitely don't have to do this, but I felt like I needed to separate those flowers and make those flowers and leaves, especially those leaves pop away from the background a little bit. So I grabbed a dark, gray marker. This is a water-based marker. It's by Tombow Dual Brush Pens. And I'm just going around all of my images, all sides here, not worried about a right or left side, just going completely around all my leaves, all my flowers with this marker. And once I get kind of that gray shadow around all of the leaves and the flowers, I am then going to kind of blend it out a little bit. So here I'm ready to blend it out. I have my spray bottle just sprayed some water down onto a piece of acetate you could spray directly onto your work surface. We just need some water. So, and I grabbed my paintbrush, grabbed a little bit of water, and now I'm going over that marker ink. So going right along the edge of my flowers and leaves and just kind of softening that marker a little bit. So it doesn't look so harsh, it looks kind of blended and faded and this will really help to make those leaves and flowers pop more or pop away from that background a little bit so your eye can separate them. So I went ahead and trimmed my panel down once it completely dried and now we are ready for some splatters. So here I'm going to forewarn I'm going to warn you this is where I make a huge mistake. I have some Gonzai Tombi black watercolor here. I've mixed it with some water. Grab my paintbrush and I'll do some black splatters. I have a piece of scrap paper here to protect the flowers and leaves. I don't want a lot of black splatters on those parts of the images. So I'm using that scrap of paper to kind of cover those, the image up. But you can see here, I, 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 my paper touched some of my wet splatters and sm smeared it. So here I am cleaning it up. I use some water, just place some water over those black smudges and then picked up that watercolor. I'm so glad I was able to pick it up with a dry towel. So that cleaned it up pretty good splattered as much as I wanted to and then let that dry completely. Now I'm ready to glue this onto an A2 top folding white card base. Just gonna hold it here for a second for that glue to set up so that panel is completely flat. Then I'm gonna finish up with this gold heat embossed sentiment. This sentiment is also from the Cosmos Bunch stamp set. I just stamped it, heat embossed it, and then trimmed it down to a nice sentiment strip, added some foam adhesive to the backside, and now I'm just sticking it onto my card front, strategically sticking it too, to kind of cover up that area where I did that smear a little bit. And here is the finished card. I'll hold it up to the camera so you can get a good look. I love this watercolor technique. It's such a fun way to get a new look out of your layering stencils. And it's really simple to do because you're not actually painting, you're just ink blending like you always do, but then spritzing with a little bit of water. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you have any questions about the products I used, please check out the links below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.